Bernie Sanders, an independent from Vermont. You know, we, as you know very well here, Senator, are three days away from a default. Uh, the two key people, the two key individuals that are watching right now, Senators Reid and McConnell, uh, give us a sense of the temperature here. Can they work out a deal? And, and what might that look like from what you know? Well, I think we start from the assumption uh, that Reid, I, as I understand mm -hmm. it, was very upset because he made a major, major concession uh, to John Boehner. And Boehner had said, look, if you give us the sequester level funding, which is really, really low, something that many of us had a very difficult time swallowing, but Boehner had said, okay, you'll get a clean continuing resolution. We passed it reluctantly. It goes over to the House, and the House says, well, no, that's not enough. What you have to do is kill Obamacare. That was last week. Well, that's not quite enough. That didn't work. Well, now what you have to do, Paul Ryan says, well, you've got to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And if you do those things, maybe we will take the radical step, the major concession. We're going to reopen the United States government and pay our debts. And now, where we are right now is the Republicans say, well, you know, maybe we'll give you something, but we want to make it really short term. We'll open the government for a couple of months. We can go this in, through this insanity again. Maybe we'll pay our bills now, but only for a little while. And what I think, the, you know, Reid and others are saying, hey, that's pretty crazy. We have already made a major concession. And what we want from you right now is a short term uh, CR. We want decent funding for the budget so we don't cut socials, we don't cut uh, Medicaid, we don't cut uh, Social Security, we don't cut Head Start, we don't cut nutrition programs. The middle class is disappearing. Give them a break. And second of all, we don't want to revisit this in a few well, weeks Senator, or a few as months. they add in more details, more requirements, then why would Democrats add to the acrimony and now perhaps move the goalposts and start discussing sequester funding? Because sequester funding is, we had made a concession for a short-term CR at a certain level. That was it. We made that concession. And now what we don't want to do is extend that for the entire year. That would be really un unfair to the middle class and working families of this country. You're talking about massive cuts in every federal agency at a time when people back home are already struggling. That's not moving the goalposts. That's not moving the goalposts at all. I so, mean, the issue that the American people, I think, understand now, is uh, that go ahead. if Boehner, uh, the only point is, Boehner could end this thing tomorrow by allowing the U.S. House of Representatives to have a vote. But if he continues to rely on his 30 or 40 extreme right wing uh, members of Congress, we're going to stay in a very serious uh, situation. Ted Cruz there in D.C., uh, out of the National Monuments. Uh, what do you think his role has been in all of this? I think he has taken uh, the Republican Party down a very, very perilous path. Uh, and I'll tell you what I think the, probably the end game will be about. Uh, as everybody knows, the Republican Party has long been supported by the Chamber of Commerce, uh, corporate America, Wall Street, and so forth. And I think that a lot of these guys understand fully that if we do not pay our bills and we have a major financial collapse, it will be a disaster, not only for this country, but for the world. Wall Street and big business will suffer. I suspect right now they are telling John Boehner, John, uh, you're going to have to break from these extreme right-wing people. Uh, and I think that will probably lead us to a reasonable solution. That is the question. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you for your time today. Bring back uh, Amanda as well as Manu. Amanda, you know, I want to play a clip.